some are born to endless night. 29th May, 2008. I am, I was, I will be. I am here. Okay, okay, it is, it's becoming quite difficult to dream this. Hang on a moment. Diary, I'll be with you shortly. There we go. My name is, or my name was, at any rate, Jacob Montauk. I am 14 years old. I was born in the St. Timothy Hospital up in Birmingham. I never liked Birmingham. It's not the shavs or the dirt in the street or the dull gray color of the buildings. It's the way the rain doesn't cool or chill or make you think or make a pleasant smell of dirt. It just seems to accentuate the surroundings, making the gray grayer, makes the people's faces into strange and in inarticulate nothings. Sorry, Auntie. Sorry, Auntie is always saying that I'm over articulate and that my prose is wildly self indulgent. She's right, of course. I am only 14. I should be playing in the sun, not writing this pe purple nonsense. So four days ago, I fell into a shadow. I didn't mean to. It just sort of happened. I stayed late from school with the animation club. And then I tripped and fallen right where a tree blocked the light. There wasn't anyone around to see me. Everything went... Weird, for a moment. Like the very beginning of something happening. When you first start to see someone's expression for a moment, before it's all suddenly cut off. I think it's because they saw me. Sprawled all over where nobody could see or help. So they took me. I don't know what this place is. It's just darkness. And oblivion. And absence. It's like dreaming. I am quite afraid. It feels like a dream. Hell. For all I know, it probably is a dream. Although I can't seem to wake up. I have these images. This long stream of dreaming images passing through my face. But even as I'm moving through some dream world or building a wall, I'm still in the dark. I can feel it, or at least I can feel its presence in the back of my mind, in the dark with, behind the eyes. I'm scared. I can't wake up. June 9th, 2008. Nothing has changed. I was dreaming just now about a corridor. And as I went down it, it wasn't there. Strange thing, I don't know what it means. I keep hearing voices. I think there might be others here. I thought they were just part of the dream at first. But I don't think they're mine at all. It's hard to explain. It's like there are other dreamers. And I can hear their dreams. It's becoming easier to tell. I'm sorry, diary. I should have write more on you. There's not much to write except the perpetual onslaught of dreams. Well, you're a dream too, I suppose. But you're there to keep me from going mad, not to help me. June 17th, 2008. There are others, I'm sure of this now. They're all around me. I can hear some very clearly. Some keep coming in. Some are quieter. Some are more indistinct. I don't think it's just a distance thing. This place doesn't seem to have things like distance. Some of them just seem more, I don't know, not quite as there as the others. Absent-minded, I suppose. I kept dreaming about that corridor, making it bigger, 
Looks more like a hotel now. June 24th, 2008. I can't stop thinking about Auntie. I hope she's not worrying. Actually, I hope that she is worrying. It's very, very odd if she isn't worrying. Quite apart from being out of character. It means she didn't care. I wouldn't like that. I don't think she would either. There are others here. They have their own dreams, which sometimes keep crossing over with mine. And they steal them. Someone stole my corridor dream. The images were just ripped and crossed over and twisted. And eventually left me. I could I could hear see something I could hear see something them elsewhere in someone else's head but they weren't mine anymore I dreamt something else instead a factory that kept repeating It must be weird back there either I'm gone or I'm in a coma or something like that They'll be shedding tears. They'll be talking about how tragic it all is. Maybe making frantic appeals on the TV. I hope it gets somewhere. I hope someone knows what this place is. I think if I just reach out, I shall report back, diary. July 19th. 2008. I forgot about you, Diary. Sorry. It's been a hectic month. So it turns out that there are a lot of other people here. I just didn't know how to talk to them. Rose says that it's that way with a lot of new people. That's why they, they stole my dream. Trying to get me to talk. Make themselves known. I fan was very apologetic about that. There are a lot of children's here. Children here. All disappeared. They all tripped or went down the wrong alleyway. Or somehow ended up in a shadow without anybody watching. Then they found themselves here. Dreaming away. Same darkness. Same images in their head. Same aimless movement in the void. Apparently everyone is normal at first, thinking properly. Then slowly, they start to be less. Like they're fading. Their dreams start fading, their minds start unraveling. Eventually, they're little more than a bundle of memories. It can take years. It can take decades. It can take centuries. But eventually, they're all gone. Faded away into the dark. 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 Sometimes these memories and personalities get picked up by others like Rose or Ifen. Sometimes it messes your head up, making you forget who you are. In a way, as Rose said, it's like you're not one person, you're many. There's something that bothers me about all of this, though. Nobody here tries to get out. It's like they were all so busy dreaming that we can't really think about getting out. That just our minds in the dark dreaming. Dreaming for what? Anyway, it's good to be around people again. I've forgotten what it was like. Rose has appeared five years ago, apparently. On there an apple tree in Texas, she was lying in the breeze. Thinking about the vastness of the world. Feeling the wind between her fingers. Her parents were down the hill. She... No wait, it wasn't five years. It was fifty. I wasn't talking to her at all. Was I? December 24th, 2008. So here we are, months later. Those of us who are alive celebrate Christmas, dreamt of festive nightmares, and swap them with each other. Ifan joined in too, despite not being her creed. 
Nick created this wonderful Christmas tree, which we all passed through our minds and guessed that it was gold, silver, wonderful. Some of those who were praying seemed to momentarily bounce back. To have more of a mind again. It was nice. I used some of Rose's memories of her hometown to make a nice little vision. For us all of a town we had Christmas all year. And decorate their homes and tanks and talk about the Christmas spirit. It was nice. Nicer than some of the dreams I had recently. For a moment, even in the dark, it felt like family. It felt like home. Like I was really holding my spoon. And it wasn't just a twisted candle in the dark. But then again, it was the dark before, but the lighting of candles. 29th, uh, March 29th, 2009. You are, you were, you will be. There's a girl here who binds us all together. She's called Golia, and she's one of the oldest ones here. She was the same age as me when, when she was taken. It's said that we're stuck down here. In perpetual childhood, or perpetual adolescence, dreaming of a power we can't think about or know what about. Golia was pretty, but that doesn't really matter anymore. All I can see is her mind, her sparkling mind. It was a kind of vaguely fluorescent glow. I'm not sure how to describe it, like a constant spark of an idea. She had lots of ideas. It was her who first worked out how we could communicate with each other. How we could send and steal dreams from one another. I like her. I like her a lot. I don't want to be writing all this down. Actually... Not writing it down, and dreaming it down, but still, yeah, go away. Octo October 26, 2009. Goya and I kept talking. She and I, Fan and Nick, and Abbas, and I all have a little conjure together, but Goya, Goya has a bigger responsibility. She keeps everyone sane. There are hundreds, thousands of minds that eventually make their way here. It's hard to talk about distancing, about distance here. As I said earlier, it kind of exists, but not really. It's like a feeling more than a physical space. Like everything here, I suppose. Anyway, I'm being what Auntie calls tiresomely pretentious again. Goya is the mother to thousands. She teaches them how to dream. Tries to keep them together. Takes their memories when they can't hold themselves together anymore. She encourages their dreams, makes them bigger and bolder. The other day, there was a frame boy dreaming of, of a set of gears, and he didn't know what to do with them. She took them and made them a grand machine. With workings impossible and greater than anything he could have ever done. He was so happy. His fraying seemed to stop or even reverse for a moment. That was nice. I think Gulia likes me. My dreams are the brightest after all, despite what Nick insists. They're so much cleverer. Wait, one too many ERs in there. June 19th, 2010. I don't really need this diary anymore. Conversation of the thousands of us stuck down here is usually enough. As is Golia keeps me sane. The only thing is I have absorbed a memory and a dream today. It was from someone barely alive in the first place. Someone not yet born. They've been cut out, you see. When their last heartbeat, they were stolen. They're dreaming, dreaming, dreaming of the cold and the rage they felt in an instant they've been 
floating through here for a few weeks, batting to and fro, picking up scattered images and memories of the faded. There wasn't much of them left, really, and they had pretty much all unraveled. I picked up the dream, tidied it a bit, and let it fly. It was a strange one, and amalgam, amalgam of many minds, but the end was understandable. There was this song, this line I was stuck in my head, it kept playing back. There was an abortion under the floorboards, and another in the sink. April 17th, 2012. I hear from the newcomer, newcomers that things were changing up there. Politics, society, technology, it's all moving on. Maybe I wouldn't recognize it. Even if I could perceive it, my fan is beginning to fade. It's sad. I wish there was something I could do. Sometimes can keep people afloat for a while, but sooner or later, the dark claims them all. It's a shame. Ifan is, is my friend. Gulia is doing what she can for her, but Gulia is beginning to fray herself. I think she's been here for so long, it's a wonder she's not gone already. I don't know what to do. I love them all, but I don't want them to fall to the dark. We have a theory about what it does now, you see. There was a boy, a young fisherman's son named Benoy. He fell into the sea and saw an eel, he, and he saw a darkness behind his eyes. He saw it lunging, but it, in its shadow, before it could bite, he woke up here. Gulia said she knew about the eel. It's an old legend around here, an old dream. One had been circling the dark since time immemorial. If the eel's in the world, then that means that a dream of it has leaked out. Maybe a lot of the dreams have leaked out. Maybe that Christmas town I dreamt up really existed, or that hotel corridor. Maybe Goya's machine too. We think that's what the dark is. It's like a radio tower or transmitter for dreams. The dreams are made real. It's what the dark does. But we still don't know what it is or why. June 26, 2012. I never knew back on Earth the joy of swimming in another's mind. Golia and I come perilously close to being one and not two. On occasion, is this love? I think this is love. She sees me more clearly than anyone else, or so she claims. At times, she swears she can see me, see properly a physical version of me hovering above her. She says it's nice, not sure if I believe her though. Still, there are some things I can't really talk about, like Ifen. This a century of her had come unraveled, so I took what was left of her memories. She was my friend, and she had a hard life. Gray communist corridors, a nursery of abandoned children. There were some old dreams there, too, of a man who lived for centuries to protect his little village. China sounds interesting. I wish I, I'd been there. When I was alive, so many worlds crawling on the spinning sphere. There was another dream, a painting that depicted the wars of the world, or part of the world. I wonder how Ifun had dreamt that one up. Strange girl. November 29th, 2012. Golia was born on the ocean step in the 16th century. She grew up riding, shooting, throwing herself through the air with hooves beneath any eternal heaven above. She played in open fields and danced beneath the sky. 
She moved like a wild thing in the wild world. Then one day, she fell down, and in an instant, when nobody was looking, she was stolen away. She came to a place of darkness, when her life had barely begun, a place of dreams. A place where humans were not made of flesh and blood, but of wood and wire and wax. Little constructs unraveling like wool. She was scared, but she was very brave. Little Golia worked out a little way mm -hmm. to talk. She realized how the dreams could be used. She worked out how to send thoughts to transmit emotion or articulate words. She bound all the minds in a little part of the of the dark to her, like a mother. She was like a mother to so many, keeping the frame whole, making their minds last as long as possible. And she survived, and nobody knew why. But I knew. I was only 14 when I was taken. All those years ago, my mind has grown up. Down here, and my emotions with them. I fell in love with Goya, and she with me. And I saw the dark twisting and immortal happiness of her heart. Her oh-so-human heart. She was uh, buoyed by the love that, that she was given, the bounds she forged, the memories she collected. She remained herself because she lent into being with others and many others. Little Goya of the Kazakh Owls was so far from home. So removed from time, she lived far longer than she was meant to. She was quick and bright. I know why she died. It was because that whole time, despite all the memories she had maintained, and all the brightness she had at attained, she was still herself. She couldn't change. She wasn't in a state of flux. Gulia was an eye. She had a notion of the self, which held her together, but slowly died in the blackness of the night. Today I dreamt of a man who could never die, but poisoned all around him. I am in, I am in mourning. I wear this black around me like a funeral suit. And yet, in the midst of the dark, an idea occurs, monstrous one, and... One that, if it works, could avenge my lost love's death. January 1st, 2013. So, I propose the following idea to the others. We are fairly sure that the things we dreamt are made real. We can control what we dream. We all enter the world in a state of collapse and flux. And dine perpetually until we... We finally unravel and become more than a ball of stray thoughts. We cannot survive alone. The more we interact and mend with the others around here, the longer we last. But we can't last forever as long as we hold onto a state of being. A state of knowing that we're a self. Otherwise, we fray into tiny strands, picked up as astray thoughts by the others still left alive. So I came up with an idea. The only way we can survive is to become one. We must all sacrifice our individual natures and merge. One being, one child of many, a mind of madness strung together. By nerve and wire because we're stronger together. Some ejected, some said that this happens anyway. We slowly fade. We are all lost. We are all sprung apart, scattered among the new children who are, who are scattered in their turn. Why hasten the process? Why not cling on as long as possible? Because I said, if we are strong enough, focused enough, high-minded enough, 
and we could dream ourselves. We could ne never have left our families. We could never return. Uh, we could return to the lives that were stolen. To the childhoods ripped away, we could feel the wind on our skin again. That convinced them we may have a little pleasures down here. But when you're never sure where you begin and darkness ends, when things like morning and afternoon and night are frail and arbitrary anchors we have invented, when our mothers are far away in an unknown place and time, when you live like that, you can't help but want to get out. February 8th, 2013. They are, they were, they will be. We were born in England, Iran, America. We were raised in Texas, Beijing, and in Midwest. The final s steps. We are Jacob, Apis, Nick, Iphan, Rose, and Golia. We are, we, we were, we will be. We see many things. No, I do. No, we all do. We see the others, their dreams, their fears. They are them. They are us. We are many, and we act as many. We see dark, we see light, we create strange images of a deal with a devil and a frozen land, of a faceless market stretching into endless night, of another dying in an, another dark, of elephants weeping for their lonely mother. It aches, our substance aches, aches or what is left of it it sees with the pain of many all we want to do is curl up and be alone and we can never can may we wake up from this infernal prison march 19th 2045 diary we know of this diary it was a product of the mind of the one of the founding members jacob montauk this element still exists with us. We decided to use it to siphon off the thoughts of that hive. We are all voluntary members of a large collective organist. Organ monkey grinder of some sort. It's getting harder to be ourselves. To be one. We've absorbed a large chunk of the total number of the missing now. There are still many hundreds of thousands to go, but we're getting there. It's getting hard to met, to think, to attach a meaning to words. We were for the time being, but soon we may not be, or rather, we will be. But we can, but but can we attach a meaning? To what, to that, when there's nothing outside of it. If we are in a universe, if we are, to, we are the de, the vo, the blah, the oblivion. Then is there an oblivion at all? Do we only exist when defined against the other? Nothing is definite, for our dreams are unseen now, and full of. Monstrous and forgotten thoughts. We have to ruminate on this further, further, further into the void. March 19th, 3994. We are, we were, we will be. The Christian weight of all that ever was. As the last child becomes part of the one, let me tell you, no, let me, let one part of me tell you another part of, of me, a story. There are new parts added all the time. We work like clockwork, an engine in the dark. I dream today of a man imprisoned. He betrayed his foe as he stood suspended over the top of an idea blasted into space forever. A war of ideas that went around and around forever. I dreamt of a 
of a of a crown in red, of a fire in gold, in gold, of seven brides for an emperor. Imprisoned, he will be here. He will be free. But he'll die like all the rest, screaming in his own pointlessness. This facade of, of his fiction scattered and to the winds. Right. Uh, I dreamt today of a vagabond, writer, artist. I dreamt he lived, breathed free, learned what life was, and that his thoughts echoed a thousand, thousand, thousand miles hence. I dreamt today of an ancient tradition, of the little communities and frozen pleasures, of the common folk skating on ice forever, pirouetting and twisting in one of in many times and places. I dream today of a cemetery that did, did not belong. Ghost of a future war that snarled and scraped and scraped against the children of humanity and the children of the machine. Auntie was right about Jacob being irrationally pretentious. It could have been described so much better than that. One year after the death of reason, the winds could whistle over the rider, waters, the hills, the oceans. It would fly free, kicking up sp sprat and dust foam over sand. The beaches under the midnight sun were ever changing, ever present where vagabonds and lovers would sink or would sit and think and kiss. Hobbs grew in waiting for fields beyond the moors. Little clay huts scattered around the entrance to the walls. Little gray s skies kissing little gray clouds. The rain wetting the crops and soaking the waters. Walkers, not waters, running through some wilderness of woodland and overcast weather. Marble columns in front of the libraries, the smell of paper and books, musty and welcoming. The lights of the of a train as it plunged through the tunnel, sh shaking all inside as they hugged up against the cold. The sight of an ancient bazaar. There isn't a world anymore. It's just dark. It won. It took our dreams and it won. We are all that's left of what was a memory. Engorged upon itself. The last scraps took themselves from time. We are the dark. And we are suspended here. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. It all goes into the dark. Some rough beast slouches towards Bethlehem, grinding rebar and freezing concrete. An unknown time in a sky of inky black. Nicholas Nick Halsinger was born in the Midwest. He was born to a loving family. In winters he would skate on the ponds and laugh with his friends. But he had another habit. On very cold and crisp and clear nights, he would go to the bridge in town and stare over, stare out over the ponds, looking at the stars, reflected in the water. Nobody was watching, so they took him. But after that, while he dreamt beneath the world, his family and friends in Paris persisted, and they thought in their minds of, of a hundred thousand different ways he could have been killed. Every fantasy, every twisted paranoid dream, and nightmare brought to the fore on the cusp of, of their minds, dreaming of the ways he could have been taken. But they were all aspects of the of a greater whole. They weren't separate scenarios at all. They were darkness. But they were all aspects of a greater whole. They weren't separate scenarios at all. Oh, wait, I read that. My bad. 
one more strand for every child taken, an endless circle. The dark exists because it has to exist. In the minds of every frightened and demented parent scared for their child's life, they already know what it means to, to their children because they can see it. They can see the dark. We never stood a chance. The heat death of the universe, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. Where am I? I float lost in time. I awake with all these voices in my head. Am I plural or are we singular? I don't know anymore. It's all dying, matter itself. The rocks crumble into dust. The dust crumbles into atoms. The atoms crumble into waves of energy. Concepts roll in on themselves. Even the dark is dying. Its purpose done, its crimes committed. A greater void awaits beyond it. It's coming now, slowly, achingly. That oblivion that ends me, us. The dark was just a memory of humans. A feeling, a fear that bound. But what awaits is more. What awaits is not a thing. With a capital letter and an ominous feeling. We will often fail to understand what it is to be blind. I know for I have dreamt for a thousand years to be blind. Blind to so many things. We will think that being blind is like having your eyes shut. But it's not. When your eyes are closed, they can still, still see blackness. The fires in your retina. The colors of your brain. To be blind is not to see that. To be blind is not to see nothing. But to be incapable of seeing. A void in your he head where your eyes should be. To die is not to sleep. To die is not to dream. To die is not even to find oneself in an undiscovered country. To die is nothing. To die is never have been. Because all that war is erased. Uh oh, because all that was is erased. There's just an end, an oblivion. I was once so scared of the dark that took me. But it doesn't matter now. The dark is a thing like all other things. And it will die too. Soon there will be nothing but absence. I can't remember who I am. Let me do something. Give something back. Let me give her back. Let her live. Or a memory of her. A shade. A vision of furs and skins. Riding on horseback with the wind within her, within her air. Last syllable of recorded time. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends. This is how the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. It's coming now. The moment, moments are shrinking. The area contracting. The dark is fraying and ripping. I shall be brief, diary, my constant companion within infinity. I am Jacob Montauk. I did not mer merge with the others at all. I absorbed them. I ate them. I did not realize it until just now. At the end, I murdered them all to keep me alive. I failed all the memories, minds, and souls. I, I took into me. Made me... Unable to think or to remember. This is all dust now. All is calamity. I should have dreamed us back centuries ago. Millennia. Eons. But I couldn't think. And there, then there was the dark. There was nothing to be dreamed about. Back into. Just an end. How could I let them go back to their lives? Their realities? When all will be dark. 
England. I shall dream of England. I shall dream of her fields, white with sun and winter, flush with dew in spring. Wait. Uh, it's now winter. Fresh and dew in spring. I shall dream of her hills, her of her hedgerows and bushes, her rose gardens, her marble columns and concrete abhorrences. I shall dream of England so that she lives, some small twisted shadow of her, some dying breath of my home. I can do something for, o for the others though, maybe I can take dreams some something back, show them history, show them all that will be, show them how to fix things. Someone, whoever is out there, whoever understands what, is, what it is to die in the dark, so others can live in the light. It's coming now, it'll be over soon, and then I won't be able to be alive anymore. I won't have to be a stolen child dreaming for millennia about half-remembered reality that will waste to nothingness anyways. Dark, dark, dark. They will, they will, they all go into the dark. 